Hi there. My name is Sarah. I am 13 years old. And now I am going to tell you a true story. And true stories are not likely to have happy endings. So settle in. Recently, my family has been going through some hard times. My brother and I still can't get over it. It just so happened that I was a late-in-life baby and a girl, which is even worse, I guess. Double trouble. Yeah, of course, my mom loved me to bits and pieces, but sometimes it was so annoying. My father also left us when I was three. So, anyway, the only beacon of light was my brother. He's so freaking cool. We can literally talk about everything. I can share all my thoughts with him, but I have to confess that I envied him a little. He's an adult now, so he's allowed to do whatever he wants to. He goes out with friends, goes to parties, drives a car, and I was never allowed to go with him. Our mom always had a good reason to make me stay at home. It's too dangerous, Sarah, or too late, or too risky. I was getting more and more annoyed with my mother every day, to the point that I wouldn't even try to listen to her advice. Even when she would try to make up with me, I would keep on mouthing off. And I just didn't understand how my brother could stand her. They had long conversations, and every Sunday they went out to a cafe around the corner for coffee. I never went there with them because I didn't want to be part of the audience for Mom's speeches. One evening, my brother came home from college and said that he had made up his mind to go to the Grand Canyon with his friends. He had been saving money for a long time. He was beaming with excitement. I was very happy for him on the one hand, but on the other, the last thing I wanted in my life was to stay alone with my mom during summer break. So I asked my brother to talk mom into letting me go with him. He did his best to persuade her that it was safe and that there was nothing to worry about, but mom was adamant. And on top of that, she got very offended and said that I was not going. End of conversation. That was the final straw. I don't remember all the nasty things I said to her that evening, but what I remember clearly was that I said, I hate you. She burst into tears and went into her room, and I didn't even feel sorry. The next morning, she seemed to be in a better mood and suddenly said I could go. I was on cloud nine. My brother and I had such a great time on vacation it was my first trip far from home, so everything seemed so breathtaking. I loved the views and our walks and all the fun. And of course, I was very happy to spend so much time with him. We even had a couple of stories we agreed not to tell Mom about. There was one when we got lost hiking and one when we dove into water from a really high rock. I wanted to stay there forever and never go back. But we did go back of course, and my mom cooked us a delicious dinner and gave us a very warm welcome. My brother could not stop telling her about our trip, but I didn't feel like listening and went to my room. I was very upset that it was all over and that it was time to come back to real life. Later that evening, I was passing by my brother's room and I saw that he was sitting all alone, crying. It scared me to see him like this. I had never seen my brother cry before, but when I asked him what happened, he said that he had an argument with his girlfriend, but I knew my brother better than that. He would never cry because of a girlfriend, and I don't think he would ever lie to me either, so I suspected that he had another reason. In the following days and weeks, I was expecting my daily routine with all the arguments and fights, but it never happened. My mom spent a lot of time in her room, and I hardly ever saw her in the mornings anymore before school. She didn't make breakfast for us any longer, and my lunchbox was also empty unless I filled it myself. It was so unusual that I even started missing my mom's awkward questions and morning pancakes. When I got back home from school every day, she was never there, and neither was my brother, and every evening they came together always quiet and looking devastated. One day, when I was walking toward my house from school, I saw an ambulance leaving our place. 
I rushed to the door and I was very surprised to see my Aunt Lizzie, my mom's younger sister, in our hallway. Aunt Lizzie lived in another town far away from us and very rarely came for a visit. She didn't smile or give me a hug like she always used to and she looked really worried and then she told me... She told me she was the first one to know that my mom had cancer and she told me how long my mom had tried to hide the truth from me. My world turned upside down. It was all clear. Now I knew why my brother was crying that evening after the trip and where he and mom had spent their days together all month. My brother came back from the hospital late that evening and told us that mom had to have an urgent operation. I insisted on going to the hospital, so, so we went there the next day. My mom looked sick and exhausted, and it was even hard to recognize her. The first thing she said was, I'm sorry, Sarah. She said she was sorry that she didn't want me to go to the Grand Canyon with my brother. She knew she was dying and wanted to try to get our relationship back on track before it was too late, but she just ended up making things even worse. That was the first time my mother and I talked, like really talked. She told me about her youth. We laughed a lot. It turned out that she liked to party when she was 13, too. I went back home with a more relaxed mind. I had this new feeling of peace, quiet, and happiness. I started cooking in the mornings. My brother even said it was not bad. Doctors said that mom was feeling better and we were looking forward to her coming back home. But life had other plans. I remember that morning and the phone call, and my brother silently holding the phone for ages and milk dripping from the bottle that Aunt Lizzie was holding. It's been two years since our mother passed away. We are trying to have a normal and happy life, but we realize that it's never going to be the same. Every Sunday we go to that very cafe around the corner that my brother and mom used to go to. Oh, I wish I knew her better when we had time. Life is not a game, and it's impossible to start over again. My mom is gone, and there are no powers in the world that will bring her back or to change the past. A past where I will always be the girl who treated her mother like trash. But now I know how tricky time is. Have you ever thought about it? Or has time ever gotten the best of you? You can share my story with your friends and ask them what they think. I'm sure you will be surprised at what they might tell you.